It says, The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke, and all that thou settest on hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, until and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou wast forsaken me. <clears throat> the Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee, until he have consumed thee from off the land, whither thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption, and with a fever, and with an inflammation, and with an extreme burning, and with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall perish until thou, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. <clears throat> And let's go to uh, verse 61 to 62. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed, like smallpox. <clears throat> you know, all these different diseases, man. There's a lot of diseases, man. Measles, the, the, the common cold, the fever, all right? And ye shall be left few in number, whereas you are as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy power. You know, we, we just read half, half the Cherokees, 50% of the Cherokees numbers gone. Whole tribes d totally destroyed, man. <clears throat> All right. Now let's go to uh, page 90 in the same book, American Indian. Okay. And it says, page 90. Uh, the irony of the situation was that the United States, though moving rapidly in 1789 toward a policy of peace and absorption, found it necessary to wage a five-year Indian war, for which she had not the slightest desire. The Indians by 1789 were actively resistant, resisting the American advance. They did not want to yield any land beyond the Ohio, either by war or purchase, and America would have to wage a successful campaign before she could put her desired policy into effect. General Hosea <clears throat> Harmer's defeat in 1790 made another campaign essential, and in 1791, St. Clair was sent into the Indian country. <clears throat> uh, Secretary of State Thomas Jefferson expressed the position clearly in April 1791 when he said before St. Clair's expedition that, I hope we shall drop the Indians well this summer and then change our plan from war to bribery. He's a bunch of fucking devils, man. All oh, talking about Thomas Jefferson, one of the founding fathers, man. He's a fucking devil, man. You know? He's a fucking piece of shit. Alright? That's what they did. They, they changed their plan from war to bribery. Bunch of damn cowards, man. Alright? And that was it on that. Alright, so now I'm going to show you information dealing with uh, the North American Indians. How there's records found among them that they keep Hebrew customs and whatnot. <clears throat> All right, so let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 33, uh, verse 20 to 21. And it says, And of Gad, he said, Blessed be he that enlargeth Gad. He dwelleth, yeah, so the Mosa enlarged Gad, his land. All right, if you look at uh, Canada, North and, and, uh, and uh, USA, that's a big plot of land. You know, he, um, he dwelleth as a lion. All right, because he's like a warrior. He's, he's fierce. You know, you watch that movie Geronimo, man. That's a fierce warrior. You know, he's he's all into war, warring, man. That's the spirit the most I put in him. Like that game, lacrosse, where they run for miles on miles, man. They run miles for on miles, man. You know, they're all built into war. They dwell as a lion. And the lion needs a lot of space, man. All right, a lion dwells in the wilderness and needs a lot of space. Can't keep no get as reserve, man, reservation, you know. It says, Blessed be he that enlargeth Gad, he dwelleth as a lion, and teareth the arm with the crown of the head. All right, teareth the arm in the blood uh, ceremony where two brothers would uh, cut their hand and, and put it together. And that would mean that they're blood brothers for life. And the crown of the head is, is the... Is the, is the crown that the chief wears like this. This is a prime example. This is the crown of the head. All right, only the chiefs could wear this. All right. That's the crown of the head. That's a prime example. All right. It says, and he provided the first part for himself because there in a portion of the lawgiver was he seated. 
and he came with the heads of the people. He executed the justice of the Lord and his judgments with Israel. All right, I'm going to show you how Gad, North American Indians, ex exercised the justice of the Lord. Because they kept the laws. They were a portion of the lawgiver. All right. Let's go to the ten tribes of Israel. All right. We went to this book earlier. And let's go to page 14. There's going to be a couple pages we're going to hit up here. <clears throat> this is page 14. It says, In going down Lake Champlain in December... 1832 I was detained by an accident which happened to the stream boat in Lake Ticonderoga there I discovered near a small village Hebrew letters on the rocks at first I thought they were the marks of feet upon the rock rocks which Mr. Morse speaks of in his geography but on reflection I saw that some were Hebrew sheens they were largely they were large letters from four to five inches long and beautifully carved, he said. I d I do not I did not know I did not count them, but presume to say that there were more than a hundred near the outlet of Lake George. There are other inscriptions in Pennsylvania and the rocks on the route of the canal. I have heard. <coughs> this is page fifteen. It says. Um, the following is from Alexander's Messenger, published many years ago in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. A government officer stationed at Lake Superior at an early day before any white settlers had invaded that part of the country, after becoming acquainted with a number of Indian tribes, found one tribe in possession of copper tubes tightly soldered, and when asked what it contained, they said they were not able to tell, but they had received it from their ancestors a long time ago, the officer finally prevailed upon him to let him open the article, and when he had so, and when he did so, he found it filled with parchment with inscriptions that he could not read. But by sending the parchment to Washington City, where it was examined by competent Hebrew scholars, it was declared to be part of the five books of Moses. So they had the Torah among them, man. You know. What are Indians, Native Americans doing with the five books of Moses? They're keeping the laws of Moses. All right, the Most High. Okay. All right, and uh, let's go to page 81. Okay, this is uh, page 81. It says, The reverend gentleman mentioned in the introduction who had taken so much pains in the year 1764 or 5 to travel far westward to find Indians who had never seen a white man and informed the writer of these memoirs that far to the northwest of the Ohio he attended a party of Indians to a treaty with Indians from the far west of the Mississippi. <clears throat> Here, he found the people he was in search of. He conferred with their beloved men who had never seen a white man by the assistance of three grades of interpreters. The Indian informed him that one of their most ancient uh, traditions was that a great while ago they had, they had a common father who lived toward the rising of the sun, which is the east, <clears throat> all right, and governed the whole world, that all the white people's heads... All right, that all the white people's heads were under his feet. That he had 12 sons by whom he administered his government. There's 12 sons of Jacob, 12 tribes of Israel. That his authority was derived from the great spirit by virtue of some special gift from him. That the 12 sons behaved very bad and tyrannized over the people, abusing their power to a great degree so as to offend the great spirit exceedingly. Thus he being thus angry with them, suffered the white people to introduce spiritual liquors among them, made them drunk, stole the special gift of the spirit <clears throat> among them, and by this means uh, usurped the power over them, and ever since the Indians' heads were under the white people's feet. But they also had a tradition that the time would come when the Indians would regain the gift of the great spirit from the white people, <clears throat> and with it their ancient power, 
when the white people's heads would again be under the Indians' feet. All right? That's some information, man. That's some good information for your ass, man. What do you, what do you clowns have to say after that, man? Where's some traditions of Aborigines in Australia talking about that? All right, you damn idiots, man. You guys fabricate bullshit, man. You guys fabricate lies, man. You guys are, like Job said, you guys are um, forges, forges of lies, man. That applies to Esau, but that applies to our people too, man. Our people are all fucking bugged out, man. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to show a clip from the movie Cat Below. And it's going to show you a scene where uh, it tells you that the Gadot is an Israelite. All right. <clears throat> 